This is the Fayutech G6 Plus. It's a three axis gimbal stabilizer. And although it looks like any other gimbal stabilizer that you see on the market, it's got some pretty cool features on it. The first of these is the fact that it can hold anything from a smartphone through to an action camera, compact camera, right up to small mirrorless cameras, things like a Sony A6500. Added to this, you can actually control a few features of your camera or smartphone from the controls on the back here. Let's find out a little bit more about the gimbal and exactly what it does and just how it performs. Fotec G6 Plus, like I said, it looks just like any other gimbal stabilizer that we see on the market. We've got pan, tilt, and roll stabilization on these three axes here. And we've got a metal construction. It feels kind of, it's aluminium, I'd suggest. It feels like milled aluminium. And we've got this tubular kind of grip. It doesn't fit the hands. There's no kind of notches or grooves in here to make it feel extremely comfortable but it is textured rubber at the bottom here it's reasonably grippy and i have to say although i like having the grip to sort of hold on to you know something that's a bit more molded to your hand this actually is quite a sleek and small design now it's powered by a cylindrical lithium-ion battery that is rechargeable via usb with the usb socket just on the side here and it's rated at 6,000 milliamp hours. Also on the bottom, we have a tripod thread. On the side here is another accessory thread. So you can attach uh, an arm here so that you can hold a mobile phone, microphone, light, anything you'd normally want to add. So setting it up and balancing it, pretty straightforward. You just use these twist locks on each axis and then just adjust the arm accordingly. The only little snag I found with this is that when you get it in either extreme, so fully unlocked or fully locked, it tends to be a little bit tight to then move it from being locked to unlocking it just slightly and vice versa. But in terms of sort of setting up and balancing it, I've not really had any real problems and I found I can get about 90% there, say. So in terms of getting it completely, properly fine-tuned and balanced, within a minute or two of just playing around, getting it balanced, you can get almost precisely there. If you've got a lot of patience, obviously you can completely balance the whole system. But the cool bit is that the motors here, they may look small, but they're very powerful. And that's why it's able to support both a smartphone and something right up to a kind of sony a6500 so what else have we got in terms of controls well there is the usual joystick control here so you can control the panning and the tilting motion on that but also on the front just here we've got a left and right control and that as you can see controls the rolling motion of the camera it's nice to have sort of one on the forefinger on the front and obviously the pan and the tilt on the back on your thumb so we've also got this LCD display on the back, like I mentioned a second ago. And on here, you can see exactly what the gimbal is up to. So at the moment, you can see we've got no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection because we're not connected to a smartphone or a camera. And we're in the HF mode, which is the horizontal follow mode. So that means as I pan the camera around, it will follow those panning motions, but it won't follow any tilting motion. Now, if I press the large mode button on the back there, if I press that once, it then switches to the lock mode and that locks the camera completely on there in that position. So in this mode, it's not gonna follow any horizontal movement. You can see I'm moving my wrist there and it's not panning and it's not gonna follow the tilt. It completely locks it press that button again, and we go back to the follow mode. It takes about a second maybe after you've pressed the button for that mode to be changed. Now, if I double tap it, we go into the all follow mode. So in this mode, you can see that it is following all of the motions. So it's tilting forward, and it was also panning from side to side. Now, we've also got another button on the front here, which acts a bit like a trigger. So when I press this in and hold it, I switch to the lock mode, as you can see. When I let go, we are back into that all follow mode. And of course, it's 2018 and we're all taking selfies and vlogging and filming ourselves. So if I triple tap the back button, the camera will split through 180 degrees so that I can film myself. So one of the coolest features, we have this wheel dial here, and that can control various features of the 
gimbal as well. So if I hold this in for just a second, we are in gimbal mode there, and it is currently, we are on the roll control. So if I move this just back and forth, you can see there that we are changing the roll, and it's really nice and fine. You can make some very slow, precise movements with that. Tap it again, we're in tilt. So you can do again some nice sweeping shots with this and tap it again and of course we're in pan. So if you want to do some slow pans round manually or track some motion, you can do that just by using this control. So one thing to note is that you can't use the joystick and the control wheel at the same time. So if I'm panning using the joystick, I can't tilt up and down. So if I'm tilting up and down there, I can't then use the pan control on the joystick at the same time. Now on the side here, we've got just another small button that's almost like a function button. And what that does depends on the camera that you've got hooked up to it. It will actually allow you with some cameras to change the white balance and ISO. But I'll come on to talk about that in a moment. The other very last button is a start and stop record button, which is great to have. Once you connect your smartphone or camera or both of them together via the gimbal, it allows you to just press that button and you don't then have to touch the camera to start and stop recording. So what I'm gonna do now is put my RX100 Mark IV onto the Fotec G6 Plus. Okay, pretty happy with that. Taking a couple of minutes, but that is reasonably well balanced. It's not perfect, but it will do for this demo. Right, unscrew it. So now we have RX100 Mark IV and we are on the gimbal there and it's working quite nicely. And you can see there's quite a lot of room for going over the, the top of the camera like that. So you can get those kind of low down sweeping shots. You've got a lot of room for clearance there. So this start stop button, how do we get it to work with our camera? Well, quite simply, you need to use the API that the manufacturers have to be able to connect your smartphone to the camera. Now, once they've made that Wi-Fi connection between the smartphone and the camera, there is then a Bluetooth control between the gimbal stabilizer and your smartphone. So basically, if you press that start button, it then tells the app on the phone that you've pressed the start button via Bluetooth and then via Wi-Fi, it then tells the camera to start recording. Now to set it up, it's gonna vary depending on what camera you're using, but the basic premise is you wanna be able to control the camera with your smartphone. So with the Sony RX104, we wanna to go to the smart remote embedded. Now the first thing we wanna do is connect the smartphone to the gimbal very quickly it finds it via the bluetooth connection there and we'll look for it should connect up in a minute then up at the top here it has automatically connected to my sony camera because i've set that up before but all you would normally do is put these sort of wi-fi settings in now on the on-screen menu here we have basically all the controls that we'd normally just have on the gimbal. So I have a joystick control here, so I can control the panning and remote movement. And really importantly, we have a settings mode. So we can actually adjust the strength of each of the individual motors on the gimbal. And that is really necessary because of all the different types of cameras and devices that this can hold. Obviously, each camera has a different requirement in terms of the motors. So if you get any funny movements or motions or anything like that, you can just adjust these motor settings here to strengthen them or weaken them. And I've found that that can help reduce some of that jitter and shake that you get, you know, when the motors go a little bit crazy if you put a camera in certain positions. But what I'd like to see is obviously people are potentially gonna be using this with more than one camera. I'd like to see the option to actually save these settings. So for example, if these were my RX100 Mark IV settings, the ability to hit save and then save it as a, a preset setting so that next time I put my RX100 Mark IV on, I could open that file and similarly, if I was using a GoPro, say, I could have my GoPro strength settings. Hopefully that's something that they're gonna sort of hear me saying and gonna be able to add via a firmware update. Another useful setting, shooting scenes. So basically this controls how the gimbal reacts. So normal mode has a kind of default kind of panning and tilting setting. 
smooth mode, it ramps up the motion and slows it and smooths it all nicely down. And then you've got a sports mode where it does move around very, very quickly and reacts very quickly to any motions that you make. It's gonna be useful for some types of filming, but to be honest, I think the first thing you should do is probably put it in that smooth mode for best results. So now everything's connected. If I press this record button here, it should send a signal to the phone, which then sends a Wi-Fi signal to the camera and we should start recording. And there we go. So you see it takes around about a second maybe just for that to kick in. And then if I press stop, we stop recording as simple as that. Now, something else that you are meant to be able to do is to control various settings. So for instance, if I press the dial in here, we can switch to the camera mode. Now using this should control the zoom of the camera. This is jittering quite a lot and you can see the wobble it's creating, but it is actually zooming in and out, although you're not really gonna be able to use this. Now the API for Sony doesn't actually allow focus control. Now this is where the problems come in because there isn't a kind of one fits all camera that works with all of these settings. So what you'll find is for some camera and lens combinations you'll be able to use the zoom if you've got a, a compact or a fly-by-wire zoom or a digital zoom. Other cameras you won't be able to zoom because you've got a fully manual zoom. Others you just won't be able to zoom at all even though in theory you probably could be able to. And it's the same story with focus. Now this button on the side also activates some camera features. If I hold it down there, you can see we can adjust the white balance or ISO. And to be honest, it's a real pain to use. You kind of have to hold the button down for a couple of seconds. You get a kind of little line moving on the screen to tell you when you've done that. And then it changes the setting and you have to hold it down a couple of seconds here. Now we're into, do you want white balance or ISO? I want white balance. Now hold it down for a couple of seconds to show it that you've activated white balance. Now choose your automatic white balance setting, hold it down again for a couple of seconds. And to be honest, I know it's a pain having to sort of touch the camera when it's nicely balanced on the gimbal and that kind of thing, but it is just a lot easier. Now this is the combination that I've used a little bit with this gimbal and I really like it. The RX100 Mark IV and obviously the other RX100 cameras are nicely suited to this combination. Large format compact cameras are gonna work well with this gimbal and I found it balances nicely. The footage I get is very smooth, particularly once you tweak the settings on the motors. I've actually got a some footage which I'll show now where I'm walking down a flight of quite steep stairs outside in a park and it is just like I'm floating down the stairs even though I'm doing the, the, the heel toe walk down the stairs and I'm trying to be as smooth as possible. I was still really surprised with just how good the footage was and how stable it was. Where the control functions of the camera work really nicely are when you're using it with a smartphone. And for that, you actually use the Fairtech Vehicle, Vehicle app, however you pronounce it. And this connects really, really quickly to the gimbal. We will just mount the phone in place and quickly balance it up. So now everything's hooked up, this works like fluidly. And if this worked for cameras, it would be a real, real game changer. So now what I'm doing is changing the exposure value. As you can see, I just move the dial and I can change the exposure up and down. Now, if I press the next button, it jumps along and I will be changing the zoom control. So now I can zoom in and out all from the gimbal control just on the side here. Now, if you're shooting with your iPhone, this is great to be able to do this without touching the phone, obviously. Let's zoom back out a little bit. <laughs> so you're not quite so zoomed in on my face. So I pressed it again and we, you're not gonna be able to see this too well, but now onto focusing. This is actually controlling the manual focus press it once more and we i believe are on iso yep so i can now change the iso of the iphone on this dial here and press it again and we're in white balance so i look a bit a bit yellow so if i turn it this way as you can see i'm going a nice 
cooler shade there and if i press that i'll go nice and jaundice and orange and yellow colors on there let's take that back down and that's that's it we've obviously can do the start and stop record from there and it, it just it just works flawlessly it's a really nice to have that control on the gimbal for smartphone shooters and like every sort of good gimbal software app the other thing it has is face detection tracking so as i move my face around you can see that it just pans around with me and will just lock on and follow me as i move around final demo so we've got an a6500 and we've got the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens not the heaviest of lenses but it means the camera can stay nicely balanced on here it's not too difficult to get balanced and obviously it's a nice lightweight combination if it's not the widest lens now as you can see that's the kind of clearance you're getting on top so you can do these kind of sweeping shots with the camera it is pushing it a little bit more with the gh4 to be able to do that once you've got it balanced now i've used the 10 to 18 millimeter lens on here as well and now because that's heavier at the front you kind of have to balance the camera sort of slightly further back and then it can start to just interfere here at the bottom it just starts to to knock on this back if you don't get it balanced you know properly it's very close and the same thing kind of applies with the gh4 you're really best obviously when you're using a gimbal to use the smaller and lighter sort of fixed pancake style lenses to get the best balance and to get the best movement and again this works really nicely it's in the horizontal follow mode here so it's following my panning let's just lock it off and you can see despite my twisting kind of movements all over the place it keeps that camera floating in position really nice that you can use such a variety of cameras from a smartphone action cam I've had it with the rx0 rx100 mark 4 and the a6500 all work really nicely with one gimbal that's small lightweight and fits really nicely in your hand but let's talk about those camera control functions i'm not sold by them completely it works brilliantly when you're using them to control a smartphone but for controlling a camera if you do get it to work things like the zoom can be very very jumpy not particularly responsive the same goes for manual focusing from what i've seen and to be honest it just doesn't work as smoothly as you'd want it to as a sort of filmmaker photographer having the ability to start stop record is where i really see the benefit for now and as for the option of being able to change the white balance and iso just forget about it it's so slow and fiddly to be able to do that in terms of the actual footage that you're able to get and how the stabilizer works i can't really fault it i've got some really smooth footage from it it works really nicely of all the cameras and as i said you can use the app to actually tweak all the motors so that you can get it to perform exactly how you want it to and you can iron out some of those times where it will jitter ever so slightly what's interesting to note is the whole time i've been shooting this review now i've used the four different cameras so i've had the rx0 the smartphone the iphone 7 plus a6500 rx100 mark 4 and i haven't once changed those motor settings and we've not really had any vibrations from it while I've been moving it around or anything at all. They are quite responsive as you change cameras. Like I say, if you do get any little tweaks or niggly problems or vibrations, you can control the motors to iron those out. Now the price, it retails for around about £270. That's quite a lot if you consider it just for using it for your smartphone or for an action camera. But like I said, most people are gonna be using it because of its versatility to be able to use larger cameras such as this with it. And for that price, 270 is not actually that bad value for money. I think it's pretty good especially like i say given that you can use it for so many different tasks if you're going for a larger camera and lens combination it might just be worth trying it out at a show or in store somewhere just to make sure that the combination is going to work but it's not going to be that it can't balance it might be just that you get slightly restricted movements just because of the size of the camera rather than it wobbling around all over the place because the motors can't cope the motors seem very strong and failure techs say that it can hold up to 800 grams in terms of combination but again that's going to depend on you know where the balance lies between that camera and lens combo so that's my review of the Fayotech G6 Plus. 
If you like this review, we do these kind of videos around once a week, as well as in the bag videos, first look videos, all of that kind of stuff. So if you enjoyed it, please do us a favor, hit that subscribe button so that you can keep up to date with all the latest photo gear news and reviews.